So, just wanted to like highlight what's going on, right? Um, or kind of give an update on the situation that I commented on uh, previously. So, um, I listened to the Joe Budden podcast, which was very illuminating. Um, gave me a lot of insight into things I had no idea about. And it seems as if I might have been a little bit off when it came to my analysis regarding Yes Jules v. Scotty Beam v. Karen Civil v. Joe Budden and v. the entire industry, right? It might, it might have been a little bit off. At first, it seemed like woke Twitter was a bit aggrieved that this young white lady with a, with a massive bum would go around, you know, saying the N-word or putting up pictures of the N-word loosely and being all, you know, out there and being all flagrant and acting like her shit doesn't stink, all this malarkey. I just thought it was a general, you know, a catty sort of girl thing where they didn't like each other and I didn't really think that much of it, hence why I gave my first analysis. And I sometimes do think in the way, in the, in the, in the area of, podcasting in an area of social media sometimes it is quite beneficial to just go on your um, own first impressions without digging too deep into it i'm not a gossip hound i don't really know what's going on in the industry i'm all the way here in the uk i don't really have any insights or any um you know um in i don't have any insider news i've not heard things through the grapevine because i'm not in that scene right it's completely over so across the pond it's way over there i have no idea what's going on so i can only interpret what i see online and of course, you know, on the Estrell side, on the Scotty Beam side, on the um, Karen Siever side, they're going to do their most, their utmost to make sure they don't look stupid online because no one wants to look stupid online, right? So for someone like me, you just have to, all you have to all you have to go by is what you see online because no one wants to look stupid. No one's going to admit their faults or or raise their or kind of like put their hands up and say like, you know what, I fucked up. Everyone's just going to double down on what's happened and no one's going to apologize. As you've seen with um, the murder mook thing. Murder mook's been called out. He's been called every name under the sun, white knight, wherever it may be. And he's still doubling down. He's still trying to, you know, ride this wave and um, bear his flag that he's got. Um, I listened to actually a podcast previously, but I didn't listen to all of it. I skipped through bits of it and I didn't even hear the bit he said about R. Kelly when he was defending R. Kelly. That sounded flipping wild and flipping nuts. But having heard everything that Joe Budden is saying, Having looked at the response that um, some of the things that Scotty Beam and Kyra Silver have been saying, and having seen other bits and pieces I've seen online from social, some conspiracy theories and some gossip bits and pieces that I don't want to repeat on here because it's not really something that I'm about, it might seem like I got it a bit wrong in the first impressions. So, if that's the case, and if that's true, then fair enough. Uh, my bad. I didn't, I didn't know... Um, just how far or how deep the hatred for Yes Jules went. I didn't know just how much damage she's actually done within her little scene and how much ill will people have towards her because of the things that she's done and her lack of repentantness or acknowledgement of the mistakes that she's made. Now, if you watched my first video, you'll notice that I did say with the Jess Jules thing, there was a part in the interview where she was listing off the problems that she has with people, naming people, oh, this, that, he said that, she said this, uh, uh, uh. and it was a part of me that thought, if you're going to name all those people that have an issue with you, you might have to just look in the mirror and think, maybe it's you, right? Maybe it's just you. And people do this a lot and do it often. I don't know. And again, maybe because I'm very conscious of the words I say and how I look when I say these things. But if I was sitting down with my friend complaining about somebody and I started listing off a whole list of names of people who are kind of out to get me and they don't understand what I'm doing. I'd maybe sit there and think, hold on, if I'm listening of so many names of people who generally, you know, come across quite cool, for the exception of Joe Budden, who kind of always has his little, you know, tits with people online sometimes, for the most part, Karen Silver and Scotty Beam are quite reasonable people. Joe Budden has developed into a reasonable person now. You'd have to say, if you've got issues with those three people who cover, you know, different demographics, in by and large, we're in different kind of scenes, different kind of industries, pursuing different kind of business opportunities. If those three people have a problem with you, maybe, just maybe if you're yes, Jules, you're the issue. And if that is the case, you have to do, you have to maybe recognize just how much trouble or how much responsibility you have towards or how much you're contributing towards the issue. And I think during the whole interview anyway, I mentioned in my first video too, because, you know, people have missed a point and I'm getting a bit of slack online from some people saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. And somehow I'm a coon, which is fucking ridiculous, right? I'm not capping for no one. I don't, you know, not got no, I've got, I've got no whole, I've not got no dog in this race. I'm just interpreting what I see online. But the moment you don't like sing the, sing the hip, sing from the same hinge of others, you get pointed out as somebody else, but you know, as something that you're not. But hey, ho, what can you do? Um, I think if you're yes, Jules, you really have to kind of figure out and concert and, and try and, you know, figure out what the issue is and what you're doing to kind of contribute to it. And again, I think for the most part, as I'm struggling here with my words, I think there is a real lack of clarity, a lack of articulation, a lack of being able to really um, articulate your arguments or your point of views in a succinct way. I think there seems to be a, a big problem with it. And it seems like for some reason, there is a, probably a psychological trait that you can probably look up somewhere. But it seems that the people that have 
the people that say the most wildest shit, right? The ones that put always put their foot in their mouth, always putting their foot in shit, always saying the wrong thing, have the tendency to keep talking. It seems like a general thing, right? The person that seems like the, for lack of a better term, the dumbest person in the room always wants to share their opinion, right? Always wants to let you know what they think about a certain thing. And it always really, it really, it really confuses me for a while. Like, why do people do that? Why is the, the dumbest person, the one that doesn't really consider their opinions thoroughly and doesn't really um, understand the law of unintended consequences, that doesn't really see things for the long way, doesn't really, doesn't really have an understanding of optics or how things might look on the outside, generally always consistently, consistently has gets involved in messy shit. And I just guess, you know, if you just, you know, if you're not the most brightest person in the world, which I don't think Yes Jules is by and large, you probably don't really think you're doing that much wrong, right? Um, but having listened to the Joe Budden podcast and hearing what they've kind of alluded to, that she might be a bit of a hoe bag and she's maybe stepped her way up to the top and she has this weird um, entitlement thing going on because of the people that she slept with. And if you look at the names associated with her, it's just like fucking hell, which again makes me wonder if all that, if all the, if everything they're saying is true, and if you're yes, Jules, why the fuck are you talking so much? Why do you have so much to say? Right? Because I guess I'm from the school of thought that I'm from the school of thought. If my parents were really wealthy, right? But I guess it happens a lot, innit? I guess it, it's like um it's like the politicians in America who are super against gay marriage. And then the story comes out that they've got, you know, 13 boyfriends scattered around the United States that they see sly, uh, on the on a sly when they're out campaigning, right? It happens quite often. But I guess my analogy was gonna say is like if I had a rich if I had rich parents and I was trying to do my little hustle in the industry, I wouldn't be preaching the message of like, you know, um racks of riches. I wouldn't be preaching the message of like startup cash and all that sort of stuff and pretending like i didn't get a big injection of money from my parents i'll just carry on doing what i'm doing and not really put any light or any or bring any attention to where my money might have come from if people ask then i might have to divulge it or i might have to politely do a little bit of a dance but you wouldn't necessarily be preaching the good fight about flipping you know about selling things on the footprint on on ebay and stuff because people would look into you and think hold on you know what I mean? You've got unlimited funds. Like, what are you talking about? Why are you faking a funk? Um, and I guess the same thing with Yes Jules. If, if this is true and you have strategically slept your way up to the top, why would you be the one to then point fingers and call people out on shit? It doesn't make any sort of sense, really, does it? Like, because essentially, like, everyone else, you know where the bodies are buried. You know what bodies you have attached to you. And people know what bodies you have attached to you too, right? They, they, it seems like everyone in the industry has an understanding that she gets around, right? Which is again something that I wasn't um, aware of or familiar with at all. Because if you see, if you saw her reaction when her sex tape came out, it seemed like the reaction of a genuinely again maybe a sex tape isn't a good correlation between being a hoe bag. Because there is maybe an argument to be said like you know if you're an attractive female and guys want to fuck you in the industry and you see as an opportunity to get yourself forward, then you know you're you're within your rights to do it. But I just think you can't go about it the way that she does. You can't go about it start pointing fingers and start being catty online and start being irresponsible with your messages, the things you're posting online, because even with the context of what's happened with what she said on Murder Mook, right? Podcast, um, Easy Offended. Even with that context, I suppose she broke up with a black boyfriend and he was a clothing designer and that niggas lie a lot t-shirt she saw online and she posted it to kind of be of a swab to him. Even with that context, I just think knowing who you are as a person, right? The, that girl who, that, the, the white girl with the fat bum from Florida, and how people look at you out from the outside looking in, and the fact that they know you step with people to get where you want to get to, it probably isn't a good idea to tweet that, right? And that's again why I say for some people, I just wonder where all these guys' friends are. Because for sure, when she's popping, when her record label was about to blow up, when Zero Seven Shake was next to her and she was hanging around the good music, I'm sure, you know, there was a lot of people like, you know, on her coattails, standing around and trying to want to be in the picture, right? But the moment something like that happens, I guess for her and her sake, you definitely see where your friends are. Or in general, before you've even tweeting it, why are your friends sitting next to you? Because usually when you're on your phone all the time, right? Why aren't your friends next to you telling you, hey, don't tweet that shit. That's not a good idea. Where are these friends? And and does she have any black friends? That's the number one thing because that t-shirt idea thing, it's not, like, it's not like it happened nowadays where everyone's woke on Twitter. This happened like a couple of years ago where the wokeness was maybe, you know, starting to come into um, consciousness. So it wasn't even as work as it is now. Imagine if she did it now. She'd be completely done, right? So back then it kind of left people a sour taste their mouth about her personally. And still, then, you know, you'd imagine she had some black friends. I guess she probably doesn't have that many or any that think that was a bad idea. No one said anything. And she, I think she mentioned on the podcast that I think 10 minutes later she felt like a deep, you know, 
pit in her stomach that she might have done something bad it was a bad idea bitch why didn't no one around you tell you it was a bad idea like what the fuck is going on here and again just absolute mess absolute bona fide mess again i think for everyone involved if you're Scotty Beam and if you're Karen Civil, I think you just let her kind of like, you know, dig her own grave because it seems that like she's incapable of, you know, watching what she says and how she conducts herself online. Um, I guess for her friends that are yesterday's friends who are employees of the 1am radio thing, I, I just feel sorry for them because if it is essentially they're the ones that are going to lose out, right? Free association. She's eventually going to say something else that's going to fuck her over, that's going to really cancel her money, and then she'll be completely done out here, and then those people have to get new jobs. So, again, I always have sympathy for that because, you know, I've come from a position where I've been let go from companies through people's ineptitude and dumb decision-making. And then I guess for all the other guys out there who fucked her, they're probably, like, sweating somewhere in the corner, hoping they don't get drawn into this, right? Because some of the names that have been mentioned, bruv, flipping hell. Like, honestly, man, social media is so messy. And again, so so messy. Okay, yeah, I just wish some wish to just, just wish people just ignore it. Like just carry on and just be like, let her say her nonsense. And just you know whatever. Um, and the murder mook thing again. Like I said, I just think that that kind of white knighting, um, is just so cringe. I think for most guys, um, we've always been in that position. I guess there is a saying that goes around. I think there is something being said about no. There is a saying. There is a saying, right? That I've heard around the single female circuit that if you're going, if you're dating a dude. Um, that they say they say to the girls to take them on a date or suggest a date in a public place, right? In a restaurant where there's a lot of service, a lot of waiters, and that you can tell a lot about the dude that you're interested in by the way he treats the, you know, the um, the front of house, the the waiters, the people that work there, just the people around you. You can tell a lot about somebody. And I think as a guy, there's a similar sort of um, thing that we have where you can tell a lot about a friend or a guy that you know from how they act around you when girls are around. Because I remember, you remember in school, there was a really, there was a time when you start to realize, wow, you're the cornball in the group. You start to point out who the corny guys were in the group because they were the ones that would immediately start wrestling when the girls around. Start kicking you, start taking the piss out of your jacket, start taking the piss out of your trainers if they were a bit shit, or your haircut, like picking up, just in, just in general, just degrading you in front of the girl in some sort of weird, convoluted way to make themselves look better. And it never worked, right? It's never fucking worked. It's like, what the hell is that? It's like the guy that goes to the gym get super ripped but has no game you're gonna get something right you're gonna get some girls are gonna be into you purely on aesthetics only but you're leaving so much room there for fucking clean up just get some charisma man do you know what i mean get some charisma get some jokes on you get some banter and it's the same way with those guys like like they have no idea that that level of sniping and laughing and ad-libbing her jokes about joe budden is not gonna make you look good all guys all over the world are like ew cringe He's bending over, he's standing up. What she said wasn't even that really serious. Yeah, they had a, a tiff. Uh, again, in Joe Biden's side, he doesn't think it's embarrassing. He's, he's friends of podcast, so if it's a big deal, I think it's a big deal. I think calling, shouting at a girl, like, randomly in the evening because, you know, nearly at 10 at night because um, you're, cause you don't like your tracksuit bottoms and you want to return them is a bit wild, in my opinion, right? But again, even if, it, even if that isn't um, that much of an issue, the, the story wasn't even that, you know, crazy we've all heard the story before it's not, it's not some new revelation and there he is hooting and hollering bending over standing up like you're like jesus christ mate I uh, again murder moot came out of that looking the worst out of everyone in that situation maybe even maybe even worse than yes jules yes jules we know is a little bit like i said in the first video she's a little bit ditzy like she generally is ditzy but she's ditzy and doesn't know it right so she keeps thinking she's being profound and really articulating things and detailing this whole conversation about what happened and why people have issues about her it's like my girl you spent an hour talking about why people hate you they might be you it might be just you it just might be it just might be just you and again considering what dev joe budden said reading between lines what i've seen online it seems like you know she's probably you know burned herself out here and again sad to see in some respects because like i said um i got sympathy for the people that work underneath her more less so than her and the things that might have transpired on the back of it because you know for like like your hate it she has done a lot for helping and putting other artists on the platform and giving them shows and promoting parties and stuff that helps them get exposure blah 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 but you know inevitably the people that work underneath her are the ones that are going to suffer the most through her ineptitude or her inability to fucking keep her mouth shut like jesus christ just shut the fuck up like someone tell her shut the fuck up just shut up shut up stop talking stop talking even if you're right stop talking the optics don't look good don't look good you preaching and telling these black girls what they should and shouldn't do and who's contributing what's the the human community doesn't look good regardless of what your point is even if you're right it doesn't look good just shut up shut up oh god almighty listen 
I can't say much because you know, I'm on social media talking and chatting shit on this podcast. But there's there's there is a real skill in knowing not when knowing when to talk and when not to talk. Right? There's something in my book actually. It says something about it. When's it? In my stoic book. Let's see if I can find this quote. Because oh, sometimes these guys, man, you're like, what the? How do these people get jobs? Or how do they get where they need to get to? It, I guess it. I guess it gives you um hope that whenever you start your thing you're gonna be fine because if these motherfuckers can do it you can do it um where is it cutting back costly ask clear set yourself don't trust senses where is it there was a quote here that i found that i thought was really interesting that really acute denigration oh i don't know what it is when you lose self-control you can't always be late to choose own the success of a chain smoke and dust what's better left on yeah there we go yeah uh is it practice of public speaking capable of moving the mass okay so this is i don't think it's a fair uh only way to speak to this so um let me see so this thing maybe it's quite similar so it says here it is from the, the daily stoic right this book definitely go and pick it up this from february 22nd what's better left unsaid cato practiced the kind of public speech capable of moving the masses believe in proper political philosophy takes care um like any um greater city um to maintain the warlike element but he was never seen practicing in front of others and no one ever heard him recite a speech when he was told that people blamed him for his silence he replied better they not blame my life i begin to speak only when i'm certain that i'll say isn't better left unsaid there is something about that shut the hell up if you don't have nothing smart to say or nothing interesting to say or you can't back up what you have what you're saying with some actual sense and some actual logic and not pure emotion shut up but again what do i know um 